Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to give you a beginner's look at how to use ACF with Elementor Pro. Advanced Custom Fields, or ACF, is a really powerful way to add custom data into your website. There's an unlimited amount of ways that you can use ACF, but in this example, I want to keep it really simple. Here's the example website that we're going to pull off using ACF with Elementor Pro. I want to have it where this information right here, the title of the company name, the description in this button right here for the website is all dynamic. So in this example, I'm going to show you how you can use ACF three different ways. The first one is using basic text field, which is this one. Then I'm going to show you how you can use the text area field, which is the description. And then I'm going to show you how to use a button, or in this case, this is going to be a website URL field. So let's just jump right into it. The first step you need to do is make sure that you have this plugin right here, ACF installed and activated on your website. And then the next step is we're going to assign these ACF fields into a single post template. So if you're not familiar with how to use or set up single post templates in Elementor, I recommend this website right here. Uh, this gives you a really good overview. I would highly recommend watch this video right here if you don't know how to design a single post template. All that means is Every time that we're using a blog post, we want to have it where there's one template that is going to go across globally on all the posts. So in this case, you can see we need to have it where this section right here has the same information on every single template. Now that you have everything installed and activated, we can go ahead and start to use ACF. So once you activate that plugin, you're going to see this new thing right here called custom fields. What we can do is just go in here, click add new. And let's go ahead and keep all of these fields underneath uh, one title called company information, company information. So once you do that, everything is going to be um, underneath that label. Then the next step is we need to add those three fields. So we want to have the company title, the description and the website name. So let's go ahead and just click add field. The first step we need to do is add the first field name. Let's call it company title. And when you do that, it's automatically going to assign the field name. So you can just leave this as is because in most cases you want to have it very similar to the field label right here. So for the title, we want to just keep this right here at text. This is just the most basic uh, ACF field. So this just is a simple text field that the user is going to input. You can add instructions if you want, but I usually keep that blank. Let's go ahead and make this required so that the user has to input this information before they publish the page. Just click that yes. You can also add default value if you want, placeholder text. You know, you can, there's some settings here. You can do character limits, but in most cases, you can just leave this blank. And that's it. So you can go ahead and you can click publish if you want. It will automatically collapse this right here. So it's a little bit cleaner. Then we can go into another field. So we can add another field and we can call this one um, company description. And same thing, it's going to automatically add that to the field name. So in this case, we want to have it where this right here is a little bit longer than just a regular text field. So this is what they call a text area. So if you click right here where it says text area, it's kind of like a contact form a message section. It's the same thing. So just like the other one, we can have instructions if you want. I required, required yes, default value. And then this right here, you can change how many rows you want it. So this is going to be how tall it's going to look inside the editor. I recommend just keep everything at default. And if everything looks good, then you just stick with that. If not, if you needed to have it where the user has more space to input this data, you can just increase the rows right here. So we can go down here and just add one more. And this is going to be for this button right here. So this is just a website URL button. So we can just go down here, type in company URL, and it's going to automatically add that. And if you go underneath field type, um, as you can see with advanced custom fields, there's tons of options here. So there's really an unlimited amount of stuff that you can do with um, ACF. So if in the future you want me to cover more videos like this, let me know in the description below and I'll create more advanced ACF tutorials like this. So instead of using text or text area, we can go down here where it says URL. Just click that. I usually do required. And just like the other ones, it's got pretty much the same information. Just go ahead, hit update, make sure everything looks good. So we got title, description, and URL. Everything is required. 
and what I like about this is it shows you the type. So we got text, text area, and URL. So this is matching up perfectly. Then down here, this is a really important section. You need to tell ACF where you want these fields to display. So in this example, we wanna have it for all the blog posts. So this is the most basic one. So it's under post type is equal to post. So if you have custom post types, or if you want to do it for pages or anything along those lines, it will show up here. But in this case, we're just, like I said, we're going to have it where it's just a simple post type is the post, which is all of your blog post. And then down here, you want to have it where it says active. Yes. Um, you can keep this one right here, standard position. Um, this is going to be subjective on how you want to have it on the back end. I'm going to show you um, a few different examples but you can have it where when the user goes to your blog post, it's right underneath the title to input this information underneath the content or on the side. Let's go ahead and do side. I kind of like the way it looks when it's on the side here. You can just do top aligned. Everything else looks good right here. So just go ahead, hit update. So now whenever we go to a blog post, it should have all of that information from the ACF on the right side right here. And yeah, you can see it right here we automatically have uh, company information on the right panel right here. And those settings, if you wanted to have it below the content area right here, uh, like I said, they have that setting really easy. You just go into here and instead of side, you can do after content. So let's go ahead, hit update. And now it's gonna be below the content area. So if you go down here, it's gonna look like this. So depending on your use case, it might make more sense to be over here on the right or underneath. Um, they, they give you a lot of options, which is good. Now that we have the ACF set up, let's go ahead and fill out some of these fields and see if everything works. So this is uh, called Wiki Design, and I already set this up as a test, but this is just the description that I already had in the database. So you can see it's just the overall uh, description of the company. And for the website, let's just add our website, wikidesign.com. And that's it, you just hit update. Now all this information is saved to this post right here. So if you go under another post, they're gonna be empty because we haven't uh, entered in any of that ACF data. So you can see it's empty right here. And like I said, I made it required so the user's not gonna be able to make any more updates unless they fill out this information. So now we can go into our single post template and add these advanced custom fields to display on the front end. Here we are on the back end of a single post template. And as you can see, we just have this header section here. And these are the three fields that we want to make sure is dynamic and not static. So if we go into this right here, as you can see, I already have it set up. It's just a regular uh, heading widget from Elementor. And if you're not familiar with how these dynamic tags work, if you see this right here where it says dynamic tags, in most cases, that means that you're going to be able to input dynamic information from ACF. So all you need to do is instead of having your company name here, you would click this button right here, dynamic tags, scroll down to ACF field. And it's very simple. Once you click that, you need to go ahead and assign the key. And this is called the company name. So all you need to do, just click company name and that's it. You can see it pulls in automatically right here. So if in the back end is not showing, there's this really cool feature in Elementor where you can do the preview dynamic content. So what that means is you can force the back end to view a certain post. So in this case, I only have those ACF fields assigned to this post called sticky column. So now I can see how it's going to look on the back end. And now let's go into the text area right here. So this is the regular text editor widget. And instead of clicking in here and type in information, you can click right here, dynamic tags. Same thing, go under here, ACF field. And now we're gonna choose company description. And that's it, that's gonna pull in that ACF data right there. And last but not least, let's change this URL. Instead of going to a static URL, we can go ahead and click dynamic tags, ACF URL field. And right underneath here where it says company website, you just click that and now that's it. Let's go ahead, hit update, preview this. And you can see right here, this is pulling in the company name, the description. And when I hover over this, it's gonna go to wikidesign.com. Make sure that's working. 
Yep, looks perfect. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Like I said, if you want me to make more advanced ACF tutorials like this in the future, let me know in the description below. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.